Not only grown-ups can sing, we can too. So CBC TV 8 is having a kids karaoke show just for us. So children between the ages of 5 to 17 come in and join in for fun. Email Nader Foster at nfoster at cbc.bb. Hear you soon. Bye. For the past 19 years, QFM has been sharing with you, learning from you and together building a community for all mature audiences. That's why we say Q is good for you. To our Q family, we say thank you for staying connected to Q100.7 FM. QFM is a station of the Caribbean Broadcasting Corporation. CBC, celebrating 60, connecting Barbadian communities. Are you a youth group, 4-H club, school, Cub Scout or Brownie Pack? Or any organization or club with children ages 4 to 11 years? If yes is the answer, then we at Fun School, we're looking for you. Let's have fun singing, dancing, listening to amazing stories, doing craft and so much more. I'm such a kid at heart. But to be part of this fun and exciting new season of Fun School, just simply send an email to Alicia Alves Grant at AA grant at cbc.bb for further details. Fun School is back and we're looking for you. While you go about your business, we go about our business and that is gathering the news. Stay up to date at CBC News Barbados on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. Get news update on radio throughout the day. And join us for the CBC News Night at 7 every night. CBC News team is on the job and bringing you the news. There is a saying, you can find a Bajan anywhere. Are you a Bajan living abroad? Or do you know of one who has migrated to another country? Well, we at Morning Barbados would love to have you or them on our Bajan Afar segment. Share your amazing stories, experiences, and how you have adapted to a new culture. Send us an email to morningbarbados at cbc.vv. And together, we will travel the world. Oh, hi. My name is Stacia Whitaker, and I'm a registered dietitian nutritionist and a member of the Heart and Stroke Childhood Obesity Prevention Collision. My motto is when in doubt, leave it out. And it goes for when I'm eating because sometimes things have ingredients that we're not sure of and I like to keep it simple. And if I'm eating something and I'm not sure the ingredients in that particular thing, then I choose to leave it out. So I keep my snacking simple with fruit, nuts, or just water. It's easy to remember. There's no added ingredients and it's also very nutritious. So remember, Childhood obesity is real, so choose healthier alternatives, and when in doubt, leave it out. Enjoy movies, soaps, drama, comedy, inspiration, education, music, and more. You get it all when you get MCTV, because MCTV gives you more. The facts say Morning Barbados reaches an audience of over 50,000 and Newsnight reaches over 56,000. It's simple. When you advertise, you're getting your message to over 50,000 of your potential customers. Make the call to CBC Sales Department today and watch your business grow. Contact us at 467-5559 or email marketing at cbc.bb.
98.1 to 1 is more than a station. We don't just play music, we keep your company, cheer you up, keep you informed and entertained. We are vibe. What do you mean? Every day we bring the party to you. We are your number one party station. We love playing music for our listeners. <laughs> And we are committed to working with our clients and advertisers to make sure that you get the attention that you deserve. 98, 98, 98.1, the one. Celebrating 18 and still your number one party station. From the beautiful shores of the Gem of the Caribbean, Barbados, home of the amazing Harrison's Cave, the tantalizing Oyston's Bay Garden, our historic garrison, the indigenous row tennis, and the friendliest people in the world, we are 94.7 FM, the ultimate Bajan experience. Hi. I'm Dr. Kia Lewis, General Practitioner and Healthy Lifestyle Advocate. Good nutrition starts at home. So this school year, I want you to consider packing healthy, nutritious snacks and lunches for your children to carry, rather than having them buy them at school. And don't just pack things you think they should have. Have a discussion and come up with things that you both know they will enjoy. We enjoy a game of dominoes and singing karaoke. I just love girls. When you love me, love me just a little bit longer. You get to relax and have a drink and listen to some nice music. It's something different. It's spectacular. It's fabulous. You know, it's a different feeling altogether. This is the CBC Morning Report for today, Tuesday, October 24th. I'm Tisha Hines. Good morning. In our top story, Barbadians living abroad want provision made to allow them to vote in local elections. The matter was raised a number of times as the Parliamentary Reform Commission recently held a special virtual meeting with the diaspora. The speakers on the topic included Barbados Honorary Consul to Texas, Dr. Louis Brown. During the, the prior two elections, I've had several inquiries as to how the uh, individuals, Barbadians in the diaspora could vote, and it was impossible for them to do so. My concern is knowing that there's, I don't know the exact number of Barbadians abroad currently, but I know there are several, I know there are thousands. And I think it's, uh, it's important and, and really a time that is due for that opp opportunity to be. I know it's it's maybe technically uh, challenging sometimes, but I think it's something that really needs uh, to be addressed. However, political analyst Peter Wickham pointed out a potential challenge with this as he questioned which constituency overseas voters would register in. He spoke of an experience in St. Kitts and Nevis. In the case of St. Kitts, the diaspora is three times as large as the number of people voting, which is 40,000. My suspicion is that in due course, the diaspora of Barbados will also grow to a similar size. So the idea of having persons overseas registered and voting in, in, in the way that they currently do now under our current system, in my opinion, is something I would strongly advise against because I think essentially you will be leaving an electoral system in the hands of persons who don't actually live in Barbados who can vote overseas at an embassy or vote overseas via the internet, and then they leave the residents of Barbados to deal with decisions that they have made. And I think that's highly unwise. Mr. Wickham is instead proposing the creation of a diaspora representative for whom Barbadians living abroad can vote. That person can sit in parliament, in the lower house, in the upper house or wherever, but ultimately that person will be the sum total of uh, the ability to vote for for persons overseas and i think it's tidier it is it's interestingly enough something that ralph gonzalez proposed when he had constitutional reform in st vincent and the grenadines because they have a similar problem 
Uh, so it gives us the opportunity to have someone to express our concerns um, that are coming from overseas, but it also locks that that support down to one person and it doesn't create a situation in which that individual or we can change the, the course of government by the basis of voting. Uh, in, in the case of, um, I think, St. Michael, South, Southeast, there was a 50 vote margin two elections ago and, and a few people there could have made a difference. Meanwhile, Barbados Honorary Council to Montreal, Dr. Myrna Lashley, expressed concern about a lack of opposition. She suggested an electoral system in which parties can gain seats in proportion to the number of votes cast for them. I was very concerned in the last two elections at the lack of uh, opposition members because for democracy to function properly, you do need someone who's going to bring a different perspective. So it may be time to look at proportional representation, although I do favor first past the poll. In a small country like Barbados, we may want to start looking at promotion, uh, at proportional representation. During the meeting, a number of Barbadians in the diaspora also expressed concern about the prevalence of foreigners purchasing, purchase, purchasing land here in Barbados. Contributors, including Joel Jones of Montreal, also spoke out against the use of corporal punishment. As Barbadians, we still have this thing about this um, beating. You know, the first thing is a belt or a stick or, or, or God knows I get some time or rods in my day. Um, but I think now that we are at a stage in 2023 that we should be able to speak to the kids rather than beating the kids. Let them have a say. Coming up on the CBC Morning Report, the U.S. holds Iran responsible for recent attacks on American forces. It's summer vacation, and CBC TV 8 says, laugh a little. Your mid-mornings have now included some family-friendly, side-splitting series like The Partridge Family. Benson and Designing Women. TV not to be missed this vacation. Weekdays from 10 a.m. on CBC TV 8. <laughs> it's Match Day Live from the 246 with host Damian Best. Your all-access pass to the action happening in the BFA Premier League and beyond. Every last Monday of the month on CBC TV 8. Kickoff time, 8.30 p.m. With analysis from our panel and highlights of the top performances. You can weigh in on the discussion via WhatsApp on 228-5562. A frantic rescue operation is underway as latest Israeli strikes kill several people, including women and children, in northern Gaza. At least 436 Palestinians have reportedly been killed in the last 24 hours. More Palestinians have been killed and wounded in airstrikes targeting densely populated residential areas. The health ministry says many of the casualties are women and children. In the north of the Strip, strikes hit the Al Shati and Jabalia refugee camps. The military wing of Hamas, the Ghassan Brigade, says it has released two more elderly captives for humanitarian reasons. It follows mediation by Qatar and Egypt. Hamas is vowing to retaliate against the ongoing airstrikes. Its military wing says two drones have been launched deep into Israel for the first time. Meanwhile, there's a desperate need for humanitarian aid. A small amount of relief has entered Gaza in recent days, but aid groups say it's a fraction of what's needed. Let's bring in Tarek Abu Azoum, who's live inside Gaza in Khan Yunus. Hello there, Tarek. Plenty of moving parts this evening, but I want to start with these most recent strikes. We've seen vision of the impacts of several deadly strikes this evening. One of them is north of where you are in Al Shati. What more do you know? 
Well, yes, Emily, the Israeli bombardment in the Gaza Strip continues uh, throughout this night. A heavy bombardment took place in a sheltered refugee camp. Uh, two residential buildings were flattened by the Israeli air forces. A number of casualties and death uh, reported uh, during the Israeli ongoing strikes. But the main concentration right now is in Khan Yunus city. Uh, three residential buildings were leveled to the ground by the Israeli uh, ongoing strikes. Uh, more than 10 Palestinians were killed, while others, uh, while more than uh, 50, uh, 50 others uh, were injured and uh, they, they are, are receiving a treatment in an Nasser hospital right now. Uh, during also the last uh, couple of uh, hours, the Israeli uh, occupation forces intensified the scale and domain of their attacks on the besieged territory. Uh, the majority of the attacks uh, victims were young children and women uh, who were critically injured and even uh, killed by the ongoing Israeli fires on the besieged territory. The Pentagon says it holds Iran responsible for a series of drone attacks on U.S. forces in Iraq, Syria and the Red Sea, though it has no direct evidence that Tehran ordered its proxy forces to launch them. They said it was a, there was a significant threat of escalation in the near term, and Iran's fingerprints were all over it. They said there were efforts by Iran and Iranian proxies to escalate the conflict in Iraq and Syria. Incidentally, actually, also over the last day or so, we've heard there have been more attacks in Syria at the U.S. The U.S. base there. The Pentagon spokesperson being very cagey about it, not really being able to answer many questions. And we also understand, actually, an attack has, is perhaps currently underway at the oil field that the U.S. controls in eastern Syria. But what was curious about this briefing for the media was, talking of messages to, to Iran, was there seemed to be a message that they wanted us to give to Iran, which is when Iran attacks U.S. forces in Iraq and Syria, the only reason that U.S. forces are there is to support uh, parties to ensure the, their defense against ISIS. Iran is, all that Iran is doing is allowing ISIS to re reconstitute and destabilize the region. So the message being, look, you're attacking us, but you're attacking your own interests because the Islamic State is your enemy. But the problem with that, I mean, it's a rather an unfortunate, unfortunate way of doing things, because as far as Syria is concerned, I don't know whether they forgot this, but Donald Trump, when he was president, specifically said that the only reason U.S. forces were in Syria was to take the oil. And there's no international legality to the U.S. presence there. So I, I think that was rather unfortunate or rather a, a curious entreaty to Iran, given the circumstances of the U.S. presence in Syria. It's time now to preview what's coming up on Morning Barbados. Of course, today is Tuesday, so we'll have our regular conversations on CARICOM. We're also going to reveal the winner of the CBC Shop and Win promotion, who will be heading off to Dominica for the World Creole Music Festival. That's coming up. Plus, we talk about the Trade and Innovation Expo, formerly BMEX. That is also going to be in a minute. And we have a new segment on grief and loss that continues this week. We also have Penny Bowen coming in with a new book in our special segment, The Next Chapter. That and much more on Morning Barbados at 6.30. But next, we have more news, sports and weather. Stay with us. My friend, you don't plan to get it. Oh, Barbados. Hey, I'm KB Clean. Join me 6 a.m. until 10 a.m. right here at 94.7, the best and ultimate Bajan experience. My show is called Bajan to the Bone. Don't miss it, Bajan to the Bone. Weekdays right here and only here on 94.7.
Forecasters have a new tool that's expected to help improve their weather predictions. It has been secured through a multi-million dollar investment by the Barbados government. CBC's Sharika Griffith has that story. Behind me is what is known as an unmanned surface vehicle. With the deployment of two of them in waters around Barbados, Barbadians are expected to benefit from more improved weather forecasts. What you see before you is one of four unmanned surface vehicles manufactured by Autonaut, a UK-based company. And these drones have been purchased by the government of Barbados for the sum of $2.5 million. Minister of Home Affairs and Information Wilfred Abrams at a ceremony at the Barbados Coast Guard base ahead of the deployment of one of the vessels, the Wilfred. He's disclosed some of its expected benefits. Improving the observations to the east of Barbados, where most of the bad weather essentially comes from. This will help forecasters here in Barbados improve on our weather predictions and our early warning for synoptic scale weather events. The data gathered from these vessels will also aid in the research of weather and marine related events by providing the means of verification of forecasts and improvements to the numerical weather simulations by adding additional high value data to the data assimilation numerical weather predictions that the BMS has been testing for the, over the past year or so. The government and the public will have the ability to receive the weather and marine information from these vessels in near real time to help support decision-making processes. Director of the Barbados Meteorological Services, Sabu Bess, says it's the second such vessel to be deployed, as one has already been conducting field tests. Both will now be located in different areas about 400 kilometers out on the eastern side of the island. Mr. Best revealed the first auto knot proved useful during the recent passage of Hurricane Tammy. We just experienced Tammy passing to the north of Barbados. And that one test vehicle, we used it at that opportune time to pull data in, to have a look, to see how worthy the data and how useful it is. It really was useful when Tammy was passing to the north. It was useful in terms of actually verifying swell heights and actually having a look at the wind intensity to the east of Barbados. So it's already starting to prove that it can work. He, however, acknowledges there have been challenges. It's not as easy as some persons may think. You just release an unmanned surface vehicle or area vehicle and just set it because it's being controlled by a computer. There's so many unknown variables out there. One, strong currents that we encountered when doing these tests. And the odd folks on the will tell you, even the sargasm seaweed that will pile up in our thrusters. That was rough. And I, and I know that that weed also posed problems for even the Coast Guard and for their resources. And I'm really thank you for the time that they took to even mobilize the resources for us to get us out and sometimes to pull us back in. The solar-powered vessel is propelled by waves but can also be controlled by the Barbados Meteorological Services. It uses AIS, an automatic tracking system which identifies and locates vessels to avoid collision with other nearby ships. Sharika Griffith, CBC News. Thanks, Sharika. Meanwhile, the Home Affairs Minister says littering contributed to flooding in some communities during the passage of Hurricane Tammy. Mr. Abrams and other officials toured a number of areas impacted by flooding over the weekend. He says a lot of the infrastructure meant to mitigate flooding was blocked by garbage and a comprehensive program will be launched to eradicate and educate people on the responsible disposal of garbage and environmental concerns. The amount of bottles, plastic bottles and snack wrappers that were blocking grills that led to flooding, right, was amazing. I need the press to work with us. I need you to work with us to encourage Barbadians to please be responsible in the disposal of your garbage. What you drop here might not affect you, but might affect somebody two, three miles down the road when it butts a grey or a well. So please let us be responsible because a lot of what we experience could have been alleviated or minimize if we have been a little bit more responsible. In sports, Barbados competed in seven disciplines on day three of the Pan American Games. Our Damien Best is following the team in Santiago.
early Monday morning, Barbadian swimmer Jack Kirby qualified for the B final of the men's 100 meter backstroke. Kirby in lane six at the bottom of your screen, clocked 56.11 seconds for second place in heat two. And he's come up half a body length in front of anybody else. Taylor of uh, Bahamas into his stroke nicely and a very smooth stroke from Jack Kirby. But it's Bassetto who's controlling matters. Is now a full body length ahead of everybody else in the pool. This is coming up to the opening 50. Good solid 54 second swimmer here is Bassetto and he leads out in 25.73. Touches ahead of Grotes and Taylor third. Leading by nearly a second and a half through 50 is quite an impressive feat. Great shoulder rotation, good high tempo as well from the tall Brazilian. 54-26 seed time, he'll be outside that, but not a huge amount outside that. 54-75, so effectively 0.5 down on his seed time. That performance put the 23-year-old ninth overall with Blake Terreni of Canada leading the field with 54.68 seconds. In the B final, Kirby finished in 56.12 seconds, just missing out on first place. I think the day went well for me. I'm very happy. It was consistent, both at exactly pretty much the same time in the morning and the afternoon. Uh, a little bit different efforts, I would say. Uh, this morning was an easier effort. This afternoon, I tried to go out a little harder, and I feel like it costed me. But I still had the same result and a time that I'll take any day. Um, I mean, I wasn't shaved, so that's a good time. I'll take it. Kirby's next event is on Tuesday in the men's 50-meter freestyle. He will be in lane 5 of Heat 2 and has the fastest time coming in, 23.35 seconds. Uh, I could just work on strength, being fast, twitchy, and active. Today was more of being loose, being like hit in my faces. Um, so yeah, tomorrow's just a fight, see what I do, and um, yeah, I'm excited to see what I can do for the 50. Meanwhile, on the women's side, Daniel Titus bowed out of the Pan Am Games, finishing 20th overall in the women's 100 meter backstroke. Swimming in lane 7, she was 6 in heat 4 in a time of 1 minute 04.66 seconds. Helen Noble of the USA was first in 1 minute. 0.29 seconds. I, of course, I was a bit disappointed with my races, but I guess it's one of those um, things that I'm going to have to, you know, take some stuff from it and keep training um, for next year and the more meets that I have. So I would say overall it was, it's been a, it's been a good experience. In weightlifting, Quantana Clark competing in the men's 102 kilogram had a best of 95 pounds, but that was not enough for advancement in a tough field in the snatch component. Then in the clean and jerk, his best was 137 pounds. That left him 16th overall after both components. In men's taekwondo, T.O.K. Holder lost his round of 16 Hiroji plus 80 kg fight against Eduardo Alves of Argentina 2-0. In the mixed team skeet shooting qualification round, the Barbadian pair of Michel Elliott and Michael Maskell shot 126 to be 11th overall missing out on the final. Reporting from Santiago, Chile, Damien Best, CBC Sports. Let's take a look at the weather. The barometric pressure stands at 10.09 millibars. It's presently 28 degrees Celsius. Relative humidity is 8% and the winds are blowing out of the east-southeast at 24 kilometers per hour. The present weather is cloudy. Sea conditions smooth to moderate in open water with swells ranging from 1 to 1.5 meters and increasing. Here's a look at how your tides roll in for today. And the general forecast for Barbados for today, a mix of sunshine and clouds with the occasional scattered light to moderate showers and a very slight chance of isolated thunderstorms. So prepare accordingly. Into the evening, it will be clear with cloudy periods with scattered showers. That's today's morning report. Our next newscast is Newsday at 12 noon on TV8, followed by The World at 1. 
via our radio network of stations, 100.7 FM, 98.1 The One, and 94.7 FM. Morning Barbados is next. Wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up. Barbados, get up. Good morning. Good morning to you. It's Tuesday, October 24th. Welcome to another Morning Barbados presentation. Great to have you in company. I'm Tisha Hines. I'll be here with you until 8 o'clock this morning. Thanks for following us online as well. Those of you on YouTube and Facebook as we stream this beautiful morning, thank you for waking up with us. And I know there are quite a few people across the diaspora who make sure they tune in every single day. So a special good morning to you. Got some calls yesterday from a few Barbadians who were on that uh, flight, uh, that jet blue flight, pretty scary, uh, that kind of ticked on to the tail of the plane once it landed at JFK. So I'm happy that you're all safe and sound and uh, I wish you all a speedy recovery. That definitely must have been traumatic. All right, so we have a great show planned for you today, which I'm going to tell you about in a minute, but I'd like to say a special good morning to all of the UN agencies represented here in Barbados and across the Caribbean region as well as we look toward the celebration of United Nations Day today. On October 24th, the United Nations was created. Every year for the month of October, UNA, USA and its 200 plus chapters around the world activate their communities by hosting events centered around a certain global issue. They participate in activities ranging from assistance in times of disaster, both those coming from natural disasters and those caused by wages of war. They offer medical assistance to those in need in these places, as well as providing clean water, food, places to rest and recover. And this year, they're focusing on the 75th anniversary of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, along with the theme, Equal Freedom and Justice for All. And with all that's happening all across our world, they're needed now more than ever. So another special thank you to all of the UN agencies all across Barbados and the Caribbean and indeed the world. And we thank you for the immeasurable contribution you make to humanity every single day. All right, we're going to get started with conversations on CARICOM today. Uh, before we double back to that though, uh, I wanna remind you that we also will be announcing the winner of our Shop and Win promotion. The winner will be heading off to the Dominica World Creole Music Festival with a friend. Don't forget that part. They get to bring a friend along. And uh, we did the draw for the winner live on 98.1 FM when I listened back to the recording. I wish I was there. They had a fantastic time, but uh, you know, it was, it was really nice, you know, to hear them call somebody up and announce that they were heading off. And that, of course, is a beautiful thing. So uh, Alicia Hinton, who is acting director of sales and marketing here at the CBC, is going to be in this morning to share with us more and reveal the lucky, lucky winner who will be heading off. I cannot wait for that. The Trade and Innovation Expo is coming up. And just in case you're wondering, that's formerly BMEX. I know for people of a certain age, maybe not me, but maybe Sobers who works here with me, maybe Peter Bino, you know, a little older fellas. <laughs> they would know what, uh, of course, the expo would have been years ago from when it used to be at the airport terminal. Not the new one. I mean, the last one. Maybe I went as a primary school child. Who knows? But now it is the Trade and Innovation or Thai Expo. And we're going to tell you a whole lot more about that so that absolutely should be fun as we feature a few of the exhibitors who will be there for this new drive in innovation and Barbados, Barbados manufacturing. We started a segment last week on grief 
and loss. And we're going to continue with Deborah Francis, the project coordinator of Seasons for Grief Education. Uh, she will be here today and we are going to be looking at, um, you know, how we can lift our spirits around what's happening in our environments. That definitely will be interesting. And we also have Penny, Crystal Penny Bowen, who's coming in to talk about a book she did. It's, uh, it's in the next chapter segment. And the book is called My Mother's Love Language Celebration of the Life of Charlene Bowen. And uh, Charlene Bowen, rather. And uh, it's food that her mother used to make for her. She said her mother really loved cooking. So she's going to share with us. Plus, Dr. Jillian Birchwood is back today. And of course, with her, we talk pediatric care. She's going to be looking at how you prepare for a new baby. How about that? So very, very interesting show. I'm hoping that you can stick around. 25 minutes now before 7 o'clock. Let's jump straight into uh, His Excellency David Komishong, Barbados Ambassador to CARICOM as we delve into the Canada CARICOM Summit generally and talk about what transpired in this momentous uh, event last week. Good morning, Ambassador. Good to have you with us as always. Good morning, Tisha. Um, I'm coming to you from Toronto in Canada. I've been here for, since last week. Um, so I wasn't here specifically for the summit. I was here to participate in a conference on slavery and reparations, a university conference. Um, but my visit happened to coincide with, with the summit, so I was able to follow some of it on um, Canadian television. And, and yes, we want to talk about the summit this morning. It was truly exciting to see, um, you know, President Trudeau with our Caribbean leaders and discussing the topics that really affect us and here in Canada to talk about how they're willing to work with us to be able to move talks and progress for, further in various uh, really hot button areas. And I know we're going to share uh, a number of uh, snippets from that uh, early press conference to set the tone. So uh, I'll let you line that up for us. Yeah, no, we're going we're gonna to look at the concluding press conference um, where we, the, we have two segments. One that looks at um, which in the, the, the summit in general and um, the achievements of the summit. And an, another one that looks specifically at Haiti, obviously, was the central issue of the summit. But um, the, the theme of the summit was strategic partners for a resilient future. And I do think that the summit lived up its name it was all about canada and caricom coming together um, acknowledging um their um, shared history and shared legacy and incidentally let me say that um, this year i produced this book um, affirmation of, of the darker brother the basis of a, um, a caricom sense of equality with with the united states of america and canada and you know that goes back so our beginnings, all of us, Canada, US, the British, West Indies as, as British as British colonies. So we have a long shared history. And in this summit, um, we came together basically to um, take our strategic partnership to a higher level. So let's start with that first um, extract at um, where um, Prime Minister Keith Rowley um, is speaking about the general outcomes of the summit. I would just like on behalf of Trinidad and Tobago and the rest of my Caribbean colleagues to thank Prime Minister Trudeau and his executive team for extending to us the well-known traditional Canadian hospitality. The arrangements for hosting us here have been absolutely fantastic. We brought you half a day of sunshine, and we trust that you will come and get the rest in the Caribbean. But ladies and gentlemen, what we have done here ought not to be sneezed at. The Caribbean islands and Canada, we have a legacy that we ought not to take lightly. In troubled times like these, it is imperative 
that we acknowledge who we are and also agree that we are stronger together. CARICOM is a group of island nations facing the hostilities of the world. We believe that we are stronger together, standing and speaking as CARICOM. But with Canada, we are also stronger together in the international community. The challenges that we face now, some are unique, some are normal, as you might say. But even if we want to walk away, as I told Prime Minister Trudeau a moment ago, even if we want to disregard the legacy of our history, our diaspora won't let us. So it's important for us to use what we have, which is that common sense of purpose, our commonwealth commitment, our belief in democracy, and the decency of the human being. Today, we've spent some time with you, and we've found a lot of common ground. And I trust that as we go forward, that this will not be the last occasion. As a matter of fact, Trinidad and Tobago would want to suggest that this event should take place at least on a biannual basis so that we can ensure that our common interests is not left behind. We found common ground with respect to Canada's strength that can be made available to us in the region on the issue of regional security national safety and security, providing of equipment, which we find difficult in the region, standing with us and voicing our concerns about being disregarded in the international community of financing response to climate change, standing in defense with us, where only this week we're reporting that two of our CARICOM nations have found themselves being excluded from the international banking community and all the trouble that that means and standing with us in taking common positions on matters, even if the troubles are far away, the effects are close to us, like the Middle East, and of course, coming out of the COVID experience. So there's a lot that Trinidad and Tobago and the CARICOM and Canada have in common, and we intend to ensure that our strengths work for us and that we remain not just friends, but brothers of the North and brothers of the Caribbean the zone of peace. Thank you. Thank you. President Irfan Ali and uh, President Trudeau. Ambassador? Yes. Um, so uh, about four things, very positive things came out of this summit. One, um, we launched uh, uh, Canada um, CARICOM strategic partnership. So this will be, this is a permanent um, mechanism that will be operated by the CARICOM Secretariat and Global Affairs Canada, which is basically their Ministry of Foreign Affairs. And um, it, will, it will be a joint commission for cooperation between Canada and CARICOM. And it will, it will feature an annual meeting of our foreign ministers, but also it will, it will have components where our officials come together, we work on different projects together. So it will be a permanent um, cooperation um, mechanism. Also, you heard from Prime Minister Rowley, we, we, are, we are establishing a strategic partnership in relation to climate change. Canada has committed to working with us with our Bridgetown Initiative, um, being there for us at COP28, um, and Canada has also um, donated some 75 million Canadian dollars, um, 64.5 million to the CDB um, to, to help finance um, um, climate adaptation projects and 10, 10 million Canadian to help with our agri um, development program in CARICOM. Also, they are committed to, to work with us on greater access to development um, finance. Uh, you know, Canada Canada um, represents the, most of the CARICOM countries on the board of governors of the World Bank and the, um, the IMF. And so they have, they have committed to work with us. They, 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 they believe in our cause that we must have greater access to development finance uh, on more favorable, uh, more favorable terms. 
and they, they will work with us also in the OECD so that all of this blacklisting, this unfair blacklisting of our countries, um, they, will, they, will, they will try to um, bring that to an end. Um, they have also committed that they're going to put these debt um, pause clauses um, into their debt instruments. This is something that Barbados has been, has been pushing so that international debt, if one of our countries is hit by a hurricane or a pandemic, we can pause the debt payments for a period of two years. Um, Canada has confirmed that it is committed um, to pushing um, that concept. And, and then finally, trade and investment. Um, there was actually a trade and investment forum with Canadian um, private sector business persons and investors. And so we are looking at a whole range of um, trade and investment initiatives between Canada and CARICOM. Um, the Canadian government has also committed to a new foreign labor program for CARICOM nationals. Um, you know, it's just, this is like an expansion of the existing farm labor program, but it, it will also go into fish processing. And, and, and finally, I guess the final one I would like to mention is that the Canadian government is expanding um, the Commonwealth Caribbean um, um, tariff program. This is where our products are, are, are given um, tariff-free entry to the Canadian market. Um, so this is an existing program, but they're going to be expanding it to include textiles and apparel. So I would say that those are the, the really concrete outcomes of the, of the summit. But we also use the summit to discuss the ongoing crisis in Haiti. And I think some, some new thinking emerged during the course of the summit about Haiti. So if we could quickly go to that extract, um, that would be good. All right, Ambassador, uh, I'm afraid we're going to have to wrap up for today. So we might have to get back to uh, talking about that aspect of the Canada CARICOM Summit at our next conversation, unless you want to double up and come in and have another conversation as well. Uh, but we know that that also featured heavily in the discussion of uh, Justin Trudeau and the other CARICOM heads of government at the summit that just concluded. So we most certainly will have to defer um, sharing that clip until our, our next presentation. Not, not a problem, but I, I would just say basically the new thinking, the thinking that has really come to the fore is that it is critical, critical that uh, we establish that national unity um, transition administration in Haiti. Um, that is the key to everything. Even this idea of the um, security mission intervention, the thousand um, police officers from Kenya plus other CARICOM personnel, it has become it has become absolutely clear that we need a, a national unity administration in place in Haiti. We don't want, you know, if we have this political divide, this continuing political divide, um, then even if personnel are coming in, then they're coming into a, a divided, a divided society. And so the group CARICOM's group of eminent persons, they are perhaps the key. They, they are on the ground trying to bring all the Haitian parties together to, to agree on a national unity um, governmental administration. And, and it has become clear that everybody is recognizing now that this is actually the key to solving the crisis in Haiti. All right. Thank you so much, Ambassador. Always insightful to have you on. Thank you, Tisha. See you next week. All right. See you next week, Ambassador. Definitely we'll delve into what's happening with Haiti a little bit more next week. All right, coming up, like I told you, a big reveal. We're going to tell you who is heading off for the CBC Shop and Win to Dominica for the World Creole Music Festival. That's next. Morning, morning, morning. Good morning. Good morning to you. My friend, you don't plan to get it. Oh, Barbados. I'm KB Clean. Join me 6 a.m. until 10 a.m. right here at 94.7, the best and ultimate Bajan experience. My show is called Bajan to the Bone. Don't miss it, Bajan to the Bone. Weekdays right here and only here on 94.7.
I'm Anne St. John, a consultant paediatrician. When packing healthy lunch boxes, do include a fruit, which includes a banana, apple. Morning, morning, morning. Good morning. Good morning to you. So it's now 10 minutes before 7 o'clock. Over the last two weeks, we've been telling you over and over again, shop, 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 and you could win, win big with CBC. And of course, it was all to take you to the World Creole Music Festival 2023 in beautiful Dominica. And now we have a winner. Uh, the winner was called live on 98.1 FM. It was a truly exciting time. Now we have Alicia Hinton who's Acting Director of Sales and Marketing here at CBC, in with us to talk more about that and what will transpire. Good morning. Good morning, Barbie. It is the morning, Tisha. Yes, we have a big winner, and she gets to take a friend. She's not only going, she gets to take a friend. So all you had to do was spend $50 at Carlton and Emerald City Supermarkets, Little Caesars, Bridgetown Duty Free, Tropicana Jewelers, Super Style Shoe Shop, or Yaffa, or just buy three Boost Nutritional Drinks. I have to tell you, there were lots and lots of entries. Every day, we saw over 200 entries come in for the competition, for that lucky winner. And yes, DJ Ras, he, you know, the character he is, he shake the box up and we pulled a winner. And Renice Bonnet was that lucky person heading to Dominica tomorrow. Oh my goodness, now, hers is a familiar name as well. So congratulations to Renice yes. for that lucky win. Good morning. She's waving. <laughs> all right, so tell me about the experience first of all. What made you decide to enter? Honestly, I was just going about doing my regular shopping. I actually um, went to Carlton to pick up a few items, not to do a full supermarket run, but a few items. And then I realized that my bill got really high. And I was just like, wait, this actually qualifies for the competition that I hear on the radio. So I sent a picture via email and I was like, well, my name is Bonnet, all the, all the contact information and everything. And then when I got the call, I was just like, ain't no way. Because they said particularly, you know, if you enter more than once, you have a greater chance of winning. And I only entered once, so I was kind of surprised when I actually won. So. Girl, it was <laughs> absolutely for you. And uh, to put those two characters, Ras and Indian, in a room, you know, I was listening to them <laughs> calling you. And I was thinking, I hope she doesn't think that they're spoofing her. <laughs> <laughs> yes, because I actually missed the call in the first place. I saw the unknown number and I was just like, who's this? So then I was just like, wait, let me try. I can't try to call back because it's unknown. So then I got a call again and I was just like, is this the person that just tried to contact me? <laughs> He's like, yes, it is. He almost chose somebody else. <laughs> so yeah. I'm grateful that they had a little patience with me. So that's a perfect lesson in, you know, all you people who see a, a number you don't recognize. And I'm not like, answer, I'm not answering that. <laughs> yeah, so talk to us about what she wins, Alicia. She wins a trip to Dominica, accommodation for her and a friend, and tickets to all the events while in Dominica. Oh my goodness, say it again for the people in the back. <laughs> yeah. That is what you call a prize. Uh, Renise, have you ever been to the World Creole Music Festival before? No, I haven't. I haven't been to Dominica either. So actually, on my bucket list is to travel the entire Caribbean. And I was planning on going to Dominica on my own merit, but I'm glad that the competition afforded me a free trip. So I'm very excited about that. Girl, you're too young to be thinking about a bucket. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're happy that we could get you a step closer on that list or that you could cross a few things off because this prize Absolutely. is, you know, it's layered. So... Uh, you know, there are a few things on that bucket list that you can expect. This is a fantastic prize. And I know you're a familiar face, um, an upcoming artist as well. So I certainly hope that you're able to use this opportunity to get yourself out there because then that's another check that you can go ahead and tick off against your name as well. Yeah, what does this mean for the corporation, Alicia? Well, this is big for the corporation. Our advertisers would have benefited through direct purchase for the competition. They would have benefited through advertising. 
And in speaking to several of those persons that participated, they did see an increase and an influx of people coming to shop at their businesses because they wanted the chance to win that Dominica trip to the World Creole Festival. So as CBC celebrates its 60th anniversary, we're always doing things, we're always giving away. You have to lock onto our stations of choice, of course, to know what we are doing so that you can be a winner, you can be a participant. There's several events we're always involved in, and as such, you need to stay locked onto the stations. Talk to us about uh, how this collaboration came about. I know that we're always talking about CARICOM as we were just before this mm -hmm. segment and collaborating across the board, but how were we able to lock this in? I know this year is a big year for the World Creole Music Festival as well as they're on the rise again. Yes, I think CBC reaches the Caribbean. We're not just closed into Barbados, we reached the Caribbean. And I think those in Dominica saw the potential of advertising with CBC. We're the home of all festivals, and such it was fitting to pair the World Creole Festival with a brand that could reach the demographic that they wanted. So it was the perfect marriage when they contacted us and we told them what the CBC could do to assist in the promotion of the Dominica World Creole Festival in Barbados. They were like, oh, hands off, just do what you all have to do. We will do what we have to do to ensure we support what you do and get the message out there. So it was a very easy marriage given the positioning of the CBC. All right, I most certainly can speak to the hospitality of PM Skerritt and the Dominican people. So I know you girls are gonna have a good time when you head on out. Renice, I heard you're bringing a friend of yours. She must be a really good friend. <laughs> yes, my best friend from school days, yes. Yes, so, She's really looking forward to the trip as well. Oh my goodness, <laughs> girls, girls trip. Girls trip. Girls trip. <laughs> Take loads of yes. pictures. I'll be stalking your page because I, I want to see all of it. <laughs> yeah, so we will we'll be sending back the footage as well, Tisha. We'll be making sure we capture every single thing. We'll be sharing with the Morning Barbados team. We'll be sharing on our social media. And of course, we'll be sharing on CBC TV 8. And I must put in the plug right now. TV 8 has some new programming, man and wife. You know, we have some new things. Green so leaf. I'm, green leaf, yes. So I'm encouraging you to lock on to TV8. There's lots and lots of programming on. It started in October, and we have some new ones coming. The African movies, is, TV8 is just the vibe right now. Absolutely. We're definitely making okay. some, some changes. And I know that you'd love to take this opportunity. We mentioned them before, but to ensure that we can truly thank all of the partners who came on board to make this a reality in our 60th year. Oh, definitely. Thanks to each and every one of them, Carlton and A1 Supermarkets, Tropicana Jewelers, Yaffa Super Style Shoe Shop, Bridgetown Duty Free, Little Caesars Pizza, each and every one of them that came on board this competition. As I said, they're extremely happy at the mileage that they would have received at the traffic that would have moved in store and we just want to thank them and it's always it's always good when people come on board cbc promotions they get that extra mileage on all of our stations absolutely so you got some people through the door some eyeballs here and there and renise bonnet who's heading off to dominica now i know what you did yesterday you were googling dominica and looking at places weren't you <coughs> Not yesterday, the day that I won. From the <laughs> beginning, I started setting up my itinerary because events are in the night. So I was just like, all right, Michaela, let's go through the Dominica Tourist Board's page. Let's see the things to do in Dominica. So we figured out which waterfalls we wanted to go to. So we made sure that everything was in like one central location so that transportation wouldn't be too difficult. You have to take a picture, of course, by the Dominica sign. And you know, all the fun touristy stuff that you know you expect from a trip, a girls' oh, trip. That's beautiful. <laughs> I want to get in your head a little bit more. Uh, I know you said initially you were thinking of not answering that phone call, but once you heard Russ on the phone, and, and you know, at what point did you realize, okay, these are the guys from 98 Point were calling me to tell me that I've won on this off trip, as you yeah. called it, just for a few <laughs> small items from Carlton. Yeah, so I missed the call, like I said. Um, it's not that I didn't want to answer. I was far away from the phone. And by the time I got there, I was just like, I can't even call back because it's an unknown call. So when I answered, I was like, this person sounds very excited. And I was like, is this Renny? So I said, yes, this is. I said, are you good? I said, yes, I am. I could tell that you're good too. 
and he was just like, yes, I'm good, but I'm calling to let you know that you're the lucky winner from the time he said that was like, you thought about a good trip. <laughs> he was like, yes, trip for two to the World Creole Music Festival. I was just like, yeah, oh my God, thank you so much. And I was just like, not me on the radio, on live ear acts in a pool, but I was like, thank you so much. He was like, oh, you know who you can carry? You can carry a boyfriend or a bestie. I say a bestie for sure. <laughs> so I've been looking forward to it. All right, that's wonderful stuff. Again, congratulations to you. Thank you so much for supporting uh, the stations of the Caribbean Broadcasting Corporation. As we support you, it's always, you know, it's, it's a symbiotic relationship. So, you know, Mutualism. we, support, we yeah. support you, you support us. Uh, that, that goes a long, long way. Congratulations. And uh, we're happy yeah. that you're the winner. Thank yeah? you. All right, Alicia, wonderful stuff. Yes. Uh, this is what dreams are made of. Definitely, and we have to thank the Dominican <laughs> Tourism Board as well um, for facilitating us. And as Renice is planning, I'm sure they're planning for us as well and um, to show off. I've been to Dominica before. It's a beautiful nature island. Beautiful. Absolutely. Thank you so much for coming in and sharing with us. I know that it was a stretch getting up this early <laughs> to come <It> was. <laughs> For morning Barbados, but it certainly is great to have you guys You're most in. welcome. And uh, for those of you who didn't win, there will be many other opportunities for you to win with the Caribbean Broadcasting Corporation. Hey, it's just after 7 o'clock. It's time for us to give you an update of the news. Stay with us. Morning, morning, morning. Good morning. Good morning to you. I'm Anne St. John, a consultant pediatrician. When packing healthy lunch boxes, do include a fruit, which includes a banana, apple, orange, or grapes to supply fiber. Aim for low calorie packaged snacks without the mention of flour or sugar amongst the four, four ingredients on the back label. One in three children in Barbados is affected by overweight, or obesity. Let us join together as parents and care providers to reduce the further development of this chronic non-communicable disease within our communities. Hey, not only grown-ups can sing, we can too. Oh, CBC TV 8 is having a kids karaoke show just for us. So children between the ages of 5 to 17 come in and join in for fun. Email Nader Foster at nfoster at cbc.bb. Hear you soon. Bye. For the past 19 years, QFM has been sharing with you, learning from you, and together building a community for all mature audiences. That's why we say Q is good for you. To our Q family, we say thank you for staying connected to Q100.7 FM. QFM is a station of the Caribbean Broadcasting Corporation. CBC, celebrating 60, connecting Barbadian communities. Are you a youth group, 4-H club, school, Cub Scout or Brownie Pack? Or any organization or club with children ages 4 to 11 years? If yes is the answer, then we at Fun School, we're looking for you. Let's have fun singing, dancing, listening to amazing stories, doing craft and so much more. I'm such a kid at heart. But to be part of this fun and exciting new season of Fun School, just simply send an email to Alicia Alves Grant. Morning, morning, morning. No uh, news today, but look at this. We have a friend visiting me. Uh, look at 
look at what he's doing. Hi, friend. How are you? What are you doing? Having a good time. Oh, my goodness. He is truly mimicking a, a, almost like a dog, isn't it? Oh, my goodness. Hello. Ramon Damit is CEO and founder of Touchstar Robotics and AI. He's rolling over. And, my goodness. <laughs> This is amazing stuff. And Craig Carrington is marketing associate with Touchstar Media and Marketing. Good yes, morning, please. gentlemen. Good to have you with us. Thanks for having us. Glad to be All here. right, talk to us about this little fella here, Ramon. <laughs> yes, well, this little fella here is actually called Gizmo. Gizmo. Right? Yes, Gizmo is one of our research and development robots. Um, we, uh, Touchstar Robotics and AI. Um, we have you now the privilege in Barbados to be working on some really cool tech. And this is one of the tools that we use to um, learn the, the coding language, to develop the bigger models. And we actually have three robots that we're going to be um, unveiling at the um, Trade and Innovation Expo. And they're commercial um, robots. So they're going to be pretty big. Um, they're smart. They have obstacle avoidance. Um, so, so there's a lot of cool stuff. That's happening here. Now. It's cool stuff happening here mm -hmm. already. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about this fellow that's here with us because mm -hmm. you're controlling him with your phone. Yes. Well, well, for Gizmo, Gizmo, we have another one called Elbow Grease. Uh, <laughs> well, Elbow <laughs> Grease is in the office, is in the lab today. But Gizmo has um, some unique AI features where um, Gizmo can actually um, recognize objects. Um, he, he can also navigate himself, he can balance. Um, so Gizmo is, he's a, is a tool that we really use so, um, in, the, in the lab to develop a lot of the bigger systems that are the bigger robots that you're going to see. Well, amazing. Mm -hmm. I think when people thought of uh, robots in the past, Craig, they used to think of those big uh, cumbersome uh, devices or, yeah, or what yeah, we would possibly, see yeah. Yeah. On, mm -hmm. on television or what we mm -hmm. saw I robot okay let's <laughs> <not happen. laughs> however uh, uh, we know that robots mm -hmm. are used a lot yeah. in manufacturing yeah, Correct. Uh, yeah. there's been a lot of innovation as well so mm -hmm. talk to us about your place as a local company kind of making your way in this industry well I can say for Touchstar Robotics we are um, you know we're developing enterprise solutions to you know to to be an aid, be an aid to um, companies who will be looking for that manufacturing assistance. Um, you know, we had um, a few selection of um, solutions, and it's all happening at the Trade and Innovation Expo. Many people may know it as BMEX, but we have now transitioned over to the Trade and Innovation Expo to more focus on innovation, education, you know, exporting the local produce that we have here in Barbados, because I think. Um, that's something that we need to start doing a little more, you know, getting the products that we have here in Barbados out to the global stage and out to people, you know, who don't, who don't even know about the, um, the great stuff that we have here in Barbados. So it's not even a matter of saying that they don't, they don't support it, but it's a matter of saying maybe they don't know about it and maybe we need to bring it to the stage so that they can now learn about it and be um, on a, in a position where they can now support it. So it's all happening at the Trade and Innovation Expo, which is actually this weekend the 27th, the 28th, and the 29th. Three different days, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And, you know, we're going to have a great time at the Trade and Innovation Expo. Again, as Ramon said, we have um, other robots as well that we will be showcasing. So those ones we will have and at the Expo. I mean, you know, you come up to the Expo, you visit our booth, and you will definitely get to see the other robots that we have. Good stuff. Mm -hmm. Now, I know, Ramon, uh, you guys are really just uh, at the forefront mm -hmm. uh, in the realm of um, you know, enterprise mm -hmm. robotics. Let's talk a little yeah. bit more about that because uh, when we talk about moving into other markets, a lot of the times is not that we mm. don't have great products, yeah. is that we're not necessarily able to service the demand in those bigger markets. Mm. And sometimes yeah. we see that in, 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 in things as simple as t-shirt making. Yeah. Right. So all of a sudden you get a large order yeah. and you have a little family owned business where people are physically doing the printing and yeah. it creates challenges. But if you're able to pair with a company mm. like yours, then yeah. you're able to get a few of the mm. processes yeah. uh, done mm. in a way that you can move out more products. Yeah, you hit the nail on the head um, there, teacher. So thanks for that question. Because one of the things that um, normally comes to the fore when we speak about robotics is jobs. People always say, well, you're gonna lose jobs, you're gonna lose jobs, and so on. But what we need to see, the other side of, um, of robotics is to allow us to compete 
on the global stage. Um, for instance, um, Fred right now is wearing a Raj Paul shirt, who is yeah. going to be at the expo as well. Um, let's say um, um, some distributor comes here and say, you know what, Raj, we want, we want 100,000 of your shirts, right? Are we able to scale the Adam Mountain Barbados? Um, no, we don't, we don't. We're not able to do it. But what allows us to level the playing field is robotics because we can have robots aid in the process. We still have the humans. We still the creatives. We still the designers. We still the persons that are coding. We still the, the persons that um, are stewards of the technology and the process. But we have the robots now that could allow us to manufacture now and, and produce stuff at, um, at, at to, to service any kind of a demand, right? So that's, that's the purpose of, I would say, what we're doing, and that's what we bring into the market. Well, excellent. I know that Touchstar Robotics is really one of your um, flagship subsidiaries, but you're also um, going beyond that. You design advanced solutions tailored to enhance operational efficiency and redefine business paradigms, but you, your expertise also lies in creating safer and smarter building ecosystems. Uh, yes. So talk to me about how that all ties in with yeah. what you do, because I can see the connections almost immediately as well. Yes, well, I want to I wanna take this opportunity also to plug our talent. All of our engineers, are, we, we are a Barbadian company. We just have three um, graduates came, that graduated from UE from the computer science program. Congratulations. Yes, so, we, yeah, good job, guys. <laughs> um, but those are the guys behind the scenes that are working on building the technology, doing the software and the, and the coding and so on. But to answer your question directly, right now we know there's an issue, um, well, not only Barbies anyway, with, with mole and, and that kind of, so there's a lot of um, discussion about that, and rightfully so. But we have built smart solutions to detect um, mold even before it gets to that, that, that process, right? So now you can have buildings that are being monitored for things like mole and air quality, Right, and we have the triggers and the sensors to make sure that that not whether whether be um, a security personnel or an external person that's monitoring the building can be able to manage these things before they actually become a problem. So those are the solutions that we have. Um, and we're not speaking of something in um, that very abstract or in the future. Those are solutions that we already have here, and we're going to be showcasing at the um, Trade and Innovation Expo. Oh, that's wonderful. And it's now the Trade and Innovation Expo, but it really is about celebrating Barbados manufacturing. And you'd see a number pro of products mm. manufactured here in Barbados on display. I mean, we take for mm. granted that these are the things that we use every single day, and they really are made mm. here yeah. in Barbados yeah. by Barbadians, yeah. and in a number of instances, exported mm. uh, regionally and extra-regionally as well. Yes. We're making world-class products that can compete anywhere in the world. It's mm. just a matter of being able to scale it to the point where we mm. truly can compete. And we're seeing some inroads being made, particularly yeah. uh, with AI and robotics and things like this. Yeah. Now, Craig, I know that uh, your good looks have gotten you <laughs> very far. Uh, I'm sure that uh, it's a little of the brains and brawn, too. But you are now the face yes. of... Uh, the the expo for 2023 talk to me about that stint well honestly it has been such a great process you know working with the team working with the guys at Barbados Manufacturers Association everything just seems to like, gel together so well right and just the things that I've been able to learn and the things that I've been able to experience throughout this process is just almost mind-blowing right so um, let, I actually want to take the time to talk about some of these products that we have here in Barbados so to my right we can actually see the Ultima Pure, right? A product of Harris Paints. And what I learned from um, this process is that you judge the quality of a paint by something called VOCs, the Volatile Organic Compounds. And it's basically um, the amount of chemicals that you have in a paint. And we here at Barbados have actually been able to create a paint that have zero VOCs in it, right? So, I mean, this is, thing, this is something that, you know, it's crazy to me, right? That you can have someone who has, you know, problems with sinuses, um, you know, people who can't handle the smell of a paint, you know, these different things that will cause people, you know, you have to move out to your home where you want paint or the office is shut down for a while because you have to paint. But solutions for those things are being made right here in Barbados. So, you know, you can paint, you can paint um, the office, you can paint the home, you can paint whatever you need to paint and live 
in the home or the office at the same time, right? So these are things. These are things that I didn't know before, but because of the um, the Barbados Manufacturers Trade and Associ Trade and Innovation Expo, these are things that I have now come to learn, right? And we also, to my left, have a, f a number of different products, which I'm pretty sure we are all familiar with already. Um, Beat, right? What I learned as well is that Beat is um, made at McBrides, and McBrides is actually the company who made WAP as well, right? So, like, you know, you look at these things and it's like, oh, it's such a, it's such a, it's such a high quality product, you know, and it's such a, it's such a great thing, and to think that it's made right here in Barbados, um, we also have, we also have the Eco Sky Water, right? Eco Sky Water, whose bottle is, you know, 100% plant based, and the water itself is made from atmosphere. You understand, like, that, like things like that are so crazy to me. The fact that you can pull air out of, pull water out of thin air, yeah. right? It's just, it's just how conversion. Mm. How, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So mm. the process for me has been has been great. Honestly, not only to just be able to promote the event, but for me personally to be able to learn and to just be able to be a part of other people's process. So All that right. has. That has been truly amazing. It's great to see you being able to expound on these products so well yes. as mm. a young man as well. I know your background is in theater. Yes, please. But yes. it's wonderful to see that you're moving into robotics yes, and marketing yes. and AI and yes. all this wonderful <laughs> stuff. Uh, I most certainly look forward to uh, the robots again this time. I know last time one of the robots sent me a message yes. on WhatsApp. Yes, yes. yes. <laughs> the robot was like, Tishi, I can't wait to see you at the expo. Yes. I was like, what? <laughs> yeah, so that absolutely was fun. But let Gates yeah. go do something as we close up uh, this particular segment. Uh, oh, man. Yeah, she's rolling. Yes. Yeah, a bit excited. Oh, yes. that is good stuff. Yes. Um, and, and, you know, a lot of stuff done right here in Barbados, you know, just so that we know that things are, are definitely happening. Okay, that's Gizmo saying bye. Mm -hmm. Bye, we'll see you at the Expo. It's coming off this weekend. Craig, remind us yes. of the dates and times. Uh, we actually are going this weekend again, the 27th, the 28th, and the 29th at the Wildy Gymnasium. And it's going to be from 9 a.m. all the way down to 10 p.m. And it's going to be a full day, just, you know, straight entertainment. You can bring your friends, you can bring your family. You know, it's $15 for adults, $5 for kids. Um, I just think it's going to be a great time. Um, and I'm inviting people out mainly because I want to see, I want people to have that same experience as me, where you're able to learn from these other manufacturers. And you're able to just experience a lot of things that you wouldn't just experience in the everyday world, right? So again, 27th, 28th, and the 29th at the Wildy Gymnasium. All right, wonderful stuff. And again, bye Gizmo. Uh, it was good to have you with us. Bye, he's waving bye to me. <laughs> oh, this is just amazing stuff. All right, see ya, have a great day. Come out to the Thai Expo this weekend. Gizmo is going already. <laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs> morning, morning, morning. Are you a youth group, 4-H club, school, Cub Scout or Brownie Pack? Or any organization or club with children ages 4 to 11 years? If yes is the answer, then we at Fun School, we're looking for you. Let's have fun singing, dancing, listening to amazing stories, doing craft and so much more. I'm such a kid at heart. But to be part of this fun and exciting new season of Fun School, just simply send an email to Alicia Alves Grant at AA Grant at cbc.bb for further details. Fun School is back and we're looking for you. While you go about your business, we go about our business and that is gathering the news. Stay up to date at CBC News Barbados on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. Get news update on radio throughout the day. And join us for the CBC News Night at 7 every night. CBC News team is on the job and bringing you the news. There is a saying you can find a Bajan anywhere. Are you a Bajan living abroad? Or do you know of one who has migrated to another country? 
Well, we at Morning Barbados would love to have you or them on our Bajan Afar segment. Share your amazing stories, experiences, and how you have adapted to a new culture. Send us an email to morningbarbados at cbc.vv and together we will travel the world. My name is Stacia Whitaker and I'm a registered dietitian nutritionist and a member of the Heart and Stroke Childhood Obesity Prevention Collision. My motto is when in doubt leave it out and it goes for when I'm eating because sometimes things have ingredients that we're not sure of and I like to keep it simple and if I'm eating something and I'm not sure the ingredients in that particular thing then I choose to leave it out. So I keep my snacking simple with fruit, nuts or just water. It's morning, morning. All right, so welcome back to Morning Barbados. Now, last week we started a new series with Deborah Francis, who's project coordinator, Seasons for Growth, Grief, Education. I'm missing a word somewhere in there. Um, anyway, Deborah is going to start me out. Good morning and welcome back. Good, Good to morning. have you with us. Good morning, Tisha. Thank you for having me back. Good morning, Barbados. All right, for those people who are not aware of the program as yet, maybe they missed it last week. Mm -hmm. Let's kind of set the tone and give an overview of what the program is and how you came to be. Okay, so it's um, Seasons for Growth, Barbados Grief and Loss Education. And it's for children between the ages of six and 18. Um, we also have an adult program, but right now we're focusing on the children and it's for those who have been affected by grief and loss, whether it be divorce, separation, relocation, death, incarceration. And it's encouraging children to talk about the losses that they've endured. Um, and when children or when anybody doesn't talk things out, the chances are they're going to act it out. So we are delivering the program from schools and it's a free program because businesses sponsor us and because the children of the future employees, they're also children of some of their own employees. So it's important that they get on board and uh, ensure that the program is there for the children. All right, absolutely. Uh, I know that you want to focus on something very special today as we continue to talk about grief and loss, particularly with young people. Mm -hmm. And we started last week about the importance of them being heard. Yes. Um, so where we've had children, have, we've had children who've been self-harming as well, which is a huge thing. Um, it's something that people say, well, that doesn't really happen here, but it actually does because they're children, they're human beings, and it happens wherever. Um, and that's something that we wanted to highlight and the fact that there are things that can be done to encourage the children to talk about the grief and loss they've been going through. And many adults themselves have been going through similar things. We always say that children are so resilient and they get past things and they're going to be okay. But what's happened has happened and it stays in their minds. And we need to recognize that, particularly with children who have been moved from one relationship through uh, to another. Now, the way that the program starts, we always start off in autumn. And the reason for that is that during the autumn of your emotions, that's when something has happened, but it hasn't quite dawned on you yet what it is that's happened. And it's similar to when you fall over. The first thing you do when you fall over is not cry, but the first thing you do is realize that you've fallen over. That's when children recognize the fact that things have changed and they have no control over what has changed. So they get frustrated. Of course, they can't speak out oftentimes. And so the frustration starts to build up. And then we'll move to the winter period of your emotions, which is when you know what's happened and you know that there's nothing that you can do about it and there's nowhere to go with your feelings. And, so, and then it starts to build up and spill over. So we teach them how to talk things out. And we have them in small groups, peer groups, no more than eight in a group, no less than four. And when they start talking about it, then they realize that they're actually not so isolated because children will say, well, ma'am, I didn't realize that that happened to somebody else. I thought it was just me. The first two sessions of the, that they'll go through, because it lasts for 11 sessions, some are reluctant to talk, but by the time they've got to sesh free, they're far more relaxed and they realize it's a safe space that they can actually talk and what they talk about isn't going anywhere. Um, we take people from the University of the West Indies who have a degree in psychology and what have you, and we train them to deliver the program because they're more than anybody else are going to understand what the children are going through. And it's also safe because you'll recognize that someone might need further intervention 
and they're the best people for it. And so then the children can then be moved along if it's something they need. Speaking of further in intervention, at what stage uh, should parents really sit up and take note and, and consider that they need assistance? Whenever there's been a change, a significant change for a family, parents need to take charge or need to take stock from that moment on. It could be, for example, a parent who's become unwell and a child's had to become their carer. And we're finding that a lot with diabetes, whereby children are then having to look after a parent. That's taken the child away from their childhood and turned them into carers sometimes. And so wherever there has been a significant change, watch your children, talk to your children and listen to your children. Too often we say things like, well, you know, I'm really busy now, I'll go and talk to somebody else or I'll get back to you in a minute. The same way that your colleagues may want to talk to you, have the time to listen to your children talk to you. Because if you shut them down too often, they stop talking. And then you'll have cases where something's happened to a child and parents say, but they never told me. I didn't know. I wasn't aware. Believe me, they've probably tried talking. So we now need to step back and have conversations with children. Some might find it difficult simply because it wasn't something that they were um, able to do. So, you know, it, it's, um, it's important that you do start listening to them. We often hear of things like middle child syndrome and things like that, uh, where some children find it more difficult than others in the family to get attention. Mm. Let's talk a little bit about this because I know as parents, just trying to juggle the regular world can be difficult. And then all of a sudden you have three or four little ones or maybe even two mm. to kind of get around to spending that individual time, balancing family time, work life, etc. Mm. So, you know, how can parents really work toward balancing that? Oh, that's a tough one. I'm glad you asked that, actually. You have to involve, in my opinion, you have to involve the children more, helping, getting them to help you to balance things. Because too often we actually talk to, we talk at our children and we talk to our children, but we don't take guidance from them because quite often you'll find that a child will say, well, actually, mum, if you do it like this and you do it like that and I can help you more, we always think that they're too young to help and they're too young to know. And sometimes the best time to teach a child is when they're young. Don't wait until they get to 10, 11, 12, asking them to try and do something when you could have been teaching them that from five and six. It helps with their independence, it helps with their confidence, and it helps a child to know that actually I am needed and mummy does need some help and I'm here and I'm happy to help. Trying to break a child at 10, 12, 14, 15, by that time the spirit's gone. <laughs> Let's be real. They want to help sweep the house and clean up when they're little. But if you wait until they're late, till later on down the line, they found other things to fill that void. Quite often it's gadgets, um, the old babysitting machines. <laughs> so, you know, um, yeah. All right, how do we get the, the ones who are not talkers at all? to talk though because there are some children who might be a little reserved mm. they're not, not necessarily you know the type of children who will speak up but as parents you would know if there's a change so how do you work toward getting those ones to be a little more open well within the program they actually become more open because they're with their peers we don't do one-to-one -one sessions because you will have people who are reluctant to talk. But when children recognise, and it's the same as playing, when they've recognised that another child is comfortable talking and they're comfortable doing other things, they then step in. We have had a child who didn't want to say anything at all until we got to session six. And then she turned around and she said, ma'am, can you listen to me now? Like, wow, okay, that's beautiful. When she started talking, and of course there's going to be tears that are going to be shed, and that's perfectly okay, they will come of their own and they will start to talk out. They will start to explain how they've been feeling and what they've been going through. And it's not a time for ridicule or laughing. There isn't anyone that does that in the sessions. And they have a set of guidelines which every child has agreed on. They set their own guidelines and we work with them towards that and in terms of behaviour and how the sessions are going to run. And you will find that every child actually does talk. We've not had a child that, and I, I've been doing this since the UK, there isn't a child that doesn't participate in it at all. Um, within the household, you have to make your child comfortable about talking. And it's vitally important that you don't shut them down. It's vitally important, even though you're busy juggling your home life and things like that, you say, I hear what you're saying. Actually, do you know what? Can we talk about this when I get home this evening and set a time so that the child knows you're interested in what they have to say too often? And I'm guilty, I've done it. And they say, oh, right, okay, I'll, I'll talk to you about it later. And later never comes. And then you'll say, what was it you were going to say yesterday? And they say, oh, it's all right, mum, don't worry about it. I say, no, 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 talk to me. No, mum, forget it. And you never know what it was they were going to say. 
Um, so you have to try and even if you don't have the time right now, tell your child that you're going to listen to them roughly at what time is that all right with you you have to talk to them as if they're adults because they're moving along to adulthood even when they're three and four that's the route that they're going to be heading along and you want to meet them there and carry them through that um so that, that's how you do get them to talk in a culture like this where uh f for a long time we've heard children should be seen and not heard mm. and uh talking back is a major thing um, there, there are some things that young people say, and certainly the way they say it, that might be deemed disrespectful. Mm -hmm. um, and this might be one of the reasons that parents are shutting them down. Mm. How, how, how can parents move past navigating a feeling of disrespect when their young people are, are expressing themselves in a way that they don't necessarily agree with or don't want them to communicate in that way, but nonetheless, they're communicating. How, how, how should parents work on, on kind of navigating conversations that are uncomfortable in that way? It's going to take time. It takes a lot of time and a lot of patience. And what we do is we turn it back on them. And when a child has been rude or disrespectful, is that something that you'd like me to say to you? Do you really think that that's acceptable? And give the child something to think about rather than just talking to them and saying that's rude and you can't talk to me like that and shut them down turn it around and ask them their opinion and more often than not they're going to say well it's true mum yeah I, you know what that was out of place that was rude it gives them something to think about because they must think about their own behavior they must think about consequences and when children have done something wrong we'd oftentimes say to them what do you think should happen to you now what do you think is likely going to come of this so but because we we're going to punish a child not seems for growth but a child is going to be punished but they didn't know what the punishment was going to be whereas if you know what's likely to happen you're going to think twice before you do it and so we have one of our sessions I think it's session four where we have session six we have choices and consequences and children are they're amazed at the fact that yes there's punishments out there but they didn't realize that that was a punishable offense and they didn't realize what the punishment was likely to be. And we asked them to think about what you think the punishment should be. And children sit around the table, the session of eight, and they're like, but you know what, ma'am, I know that that was wrong, but I didn't actually think it was that severe to warrant a punishment. So it's given them something to think about. And as they talk amongst each other, they then start coming up with better ideas as how they could do things differently and what's likely to happen when they don't, because you've got the long-term consequences, the immediate consequences and positive consequences and so that's food for thought for them as well it's important that they start thinking ahead because they're going to be going out into the workplace they're going to be going to secondary school they're going to be possibly later down the line going to work overseas and these are things that you must be aware of we can't just leave them and let go of them too early so we, we do start off with autumn as I said and we take them through that process for two weeks then it will be another session for two weeks which will be our winter another session for two weeks, summer, uh, spring, sorry, and another two sessions, which will be summer. And then we leave them for six weeks with the tools that we've given them. And at the end of the six week period, we'd have a reconnector to find out how they've coped and how they've managed. Then after that, there'll be another session, six weeks down the line. And what we're getting back from schools, from the teachers, from the principals, they're seeing less and less of these children who were constantly at their door because of some infraction that they committed. But the children are thinking twice and they're actually saying to each other, that's not a good idea, you know, buddy, if you do that, this is likely to happen. Whereas before they would constantly lash out. Yeah, uh, definitely interesting. And I'm happy to hear that you're now in schools as well. Mm. So Deborah Francis, uh, project coordinator, with the Seasons for Growth, Barbados, Grief and Loss Education, um, education uh, Project, more or less. Yeah. Um, it's, it's wonderful work that you're doing. And it's a free service. Remember, it's being offered to children 6 to 18 years old. It's in some schools, uh, but, uh, you know, how can parents who are not necessarily a part of the school program mm. get in contact with you to be able to help their young people? Well, we, our phone number is 268 2085 and we also have an email address they could email us on seasons for growth bb mm -hmm. at gmail.com i had to think about that <laughs> and um and we have a facebook and instagram page we also we were supposed to have had a concert last sat last saturday but because of the rain that was postponed and so it's now going to take place on sunday the 12th of november 
um, and that's a, a concert for anybody to come along and see the programme. We're asking people to sponsor us and to follow us and also to encourage well, we're encouraging the schools to join on the programme. If you have a child who's been going through difficulties, we look at that and we reach out to those schools and we will deliver the programme to the schools wherever okay. possible. Wonderful. Yeah. I want to thank you so much, Deborah Francis, for sharing with us. Thank and you. And remember, if you have a child that's dealing with loss or grief, this definitely is yeah. a programme for you. We're going to take a break, and when we come back, the next chapter we're sharing... Uh, it's not a book that's new to you because we've talked about it before, but it certainly is timely. Stay with us. Morning, morning, morning. Good morning. Good morning to you. Oh, hi! My name is Stacia Whitaker and I'm a registered dietitian nutritionist and a member of the Heart and Stroke Childhood Obesity Prevention Collegiate. My motto is when in doubt leave it out and it goes for when I'm eating because sometimes things have ingredients that we're not sure of and I like to keep it simple and if I'm eating something and I'm not sure the ingredients in that particular thing then I choose to leave it out. So I keep my snacking simple with fruit, nuts, or just water. It's Good morning, morning, morning. Good morning. Good morning to you. The time has moved on to 23 minutes before 8 o'clock. It goes by so quickly. Sometimes I don't even realize how quickly time is flying. Particularly happens when you're having fun, though. I have to say good morning and welcome back to uh, Crystal Penny Bowen, who's here to spend morning, a little time with us this morning and is so timely good morning yeah. to have you with us to talk about this yes. wonderful book yes. um uh, we mentioned it before i think i've had you on the morning report yes where we talked about it and um you know cervical cancer generally so for those people who don't know talk to us a little bit about uh all that you're doing in the area of advocacy yes yes so good morning barbados so the my journey started last year my mom, she passed away in March of 2022. And um, I, it was like the 16th of March. And then the next day, I found out that she died on the 17th, right? Uh, it was very sudden. It was very immediate. And um, it was very traumatizing. Um, I'm my mom's only child. So uh, she and I were the, the family unit. Um, but a few months after that, I, I decided that I need to work on my grief and the loss and, you know, dealing with that. And I thought about um, celebrating her life with this book called Food, My Mother's Love Language, Celebrating the Life of Charlene Bowen. Uh, my mom was an exceptional cook. And I just wanted to do something that will, you know, help people to remember who she was as an individual. So uh, the book has in 12 recipes, they have in drink recipes as well, but it also talks about her life, how she grew up, her pursuit of entrepreneurship, because she, she operated a shop uh, in the Bayland community, Piper's Avenue. Uh, I have no memories of that, that, that beginning, but I do have pictures of her 
um, in the shop and so on. And eventually she went on to do catering and she was in the, the food industry for over 30 years. So the book talks all about that. Uh, the recipes are very unique, some of them. Some we have like split pea cuckoo, nobody has heard about that. Um, but they're also very Bajan, so you have your pudding and sauce. There's fish sauce. I know persons might not be familiar with that. Um, there are also sorrel cupcakes. You know, Christmas, we think about sorrel drink. Uh, Mom made sorrel cupcakes at Christmas, and everybody was like, what is this, you know? Yeah. So she was very creative, very innovative, and she was just a spirit. She was just so funny. She always made me laugh. She knew I love a good cuckoo. That was my favorite meal. Uh, so the book is very Barbadian. And um, I just wanted to represent that in the book, and I think I did so. What has uh, kind of delving into all that your mother did and being mm -hmm. able to memorialize it mm -hmm. in the pages of this book, how has that helped you uh, in dealing with losing her? Well, as I said, you know, my mom and I were extremely, we were a family unit, we were extremely close. And just working on it, you know, I, I can't tell you that it was not without the tears. As I wrote it, I, I cried, you know, I reminisced, you know, um, her memory is every day for me. I remember everything about her, right? So for me, the process, it helped me to kind of deal with what I was going through because there's nobody to talk to now. She was the, she was the advisor, she was the counselor. So having the book, it helps me to recognize her as an individual, recognize who I am and what I do, and hence why the advocacy, because I, I don't want persons to go through what I went through in terms of losing a parent. And throughout the process, uh, we are now in 2023, people have come to me and said, you know, you're doing a great job. I love the fact that you're spreading the message. Pap smear testing is important, you know, keep it up. Uh, we love what you do. So I, I feel good about that. I know I talked about losing her, but being mm -hmm. able to uh, to document a lot of what she loved to do yeah. and who she was really ensures that she's around for a, for long, a long, long time, time in yeah. terms of her memory. Yeah. Uh, were you one of these children who pretended like I'm not paying attention? You know, and, and all of a sudden now you're able to put all these recipes down on paper it, or, or were you involved? It was not easy. My mom, if you know any traditional Caribbean mom, they do not share their best secrets. So they, they don't share their... And their, of course they don't they, have like they, recipes, recipes. No, no. So obviously the measurements, you know, yeah. everything is measured with a cup of love. So there was no half cup. It's like, mom, so how many cups of so-and-so you use? And she was like... You just need to be in the kitchen, you know. So for her, it was like, it was for me, it was difficult to get the recipes out of her. And I had to be there and observe. And, you know, I had to do some research and stuff. Because, you know, with these Caribbean moms, they're not going to tell you it's a half a cup of this or it's two teaspoons of this, you know. And, and that's one of the things that my mom always said. You, whenever you're in the kitchen, always make sure that you cook with a lot of love. You know, and, and, and that's essentially who she was as an that, individual. That's really what makes the food taste good, right? <laughs> Indeed. Yeah? Indeed. Our little ones are always saying, why does Ma's food taste it's so, so good. good? You know, it's the love that's it's true. poured into it. It's true. Uh, for you, though, uh, let's talk a little bit about these recipes. Yeah. Because I did open my eyes big when I saw the split peekaboo. Cuckoo. I've not heard of that. Yeah. And then there are quite a few very interesting, interesting. Yeah. recipes. So sweet potatoes, steamed pudding, pudding, and fish sauce. Yes. So good. Sorrel cupcakes. So good. So good. So good. So like uh, I wanted initially, I wanted to do a calendar, right? Hence there were, you know, there were going to be 12 recipes. But then essentially I said, you know what, I'm just going to combine everything and just make it one big cookbook. And I decided, you know, how did I decide upon the recipes? Well, mom, she was very active on social media. She had a page called Patty B's. So my mom, when she catered food, she would tell me, Crystal, come and take some photos. So I would take some snaps. And they're not perfect photos, I must admit, but there were pictures of these things when she were preparing them at the time. And definitely the split pea was a, she was a person, as I said, she was very good at keeping a good secret. Who's like, mom, I never heard about this, this thing. She's like, yeah, this is something that I've done before. Uh, she grew up Adventist, so she uh, learned a lot of vegetarian meals. So a lot of her food incorporated a lot of, a lot of vegetables and, and peas and beans and stuff. She did like a carrot loaf and all these fantastic, everything tasted great. You couldn't complain when it came to my mom. So um, it's just a combination of all the years and, and the things that she's done, cooking, catering, 
and I just decided to put it in the book. That's beautiful. Let's uh, talk a little bit about uh, the physical book itself because it's yeah. here. I know you're yes, really yes, excited. Yes, 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 yes. I'm proud of I'm proud about it. So yes. show it off a little bit. Yes, yes, yes. So <laughs> mom, um, as I said, mom loved to to bake. Uh, she wasn't like one of those professional bakers, but definitely things like your um, your salt breads and your turnover. There's a turnover recipe in, in the book as well. There are so many different things that she was very good at making. She was, a, as I said, she was a cake maker, but she could make a pound cake. She did black cake. Christmas cake was was legendary. So um, these were just some of the things that I thought about when I was making the book. And obviously, as I said, it was hard to get the ingredients because mom, she kept everything close to her chest. But overall, um, I tried to put in as much as I can. And there are little stories about her and the cooking process, you know, how she cre created our meals, how she did her preparation and so on. Um, so it, 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 to me, it just embodies all that she represents. Wonderful. You're doing a fantastic job Thank you. in the area of advocacy and keeping your mom's memory alive. Thank you so much. But sharing with a whole new generation of people as well. I most certainly will be trying a few of those recipes, if only for Christmas. Yes. And I'll let you know how they go. The sorrel cupcakes sound yes. absolutely divine. So yes. I will try that too. But uh, where can we get the book? The book is available on Amazon. Persons can reach out to me on Instagram if they want a personal copy. I am Miss underscore Penny246. Uh, you can reach out to me. I am pretty responsive and you can get a copy from me. But the book is available on Amazon. Just type in the title, Food, My Mother's Love Language, Celebrating the Life of Charlene Bowen. And uh, I just want to share it with the world. And it's more than a cookbook. It also aims to bring awareness to yes. cervical cancer and HPV prevention by introducing her social media group, Life After Loss, yeah. as well. Yeah. So, Crystal Penny Bowen, Thank thanks you. for sharing thanks with us. Thanks for having me. Thank Always you. good to have you. Thank you. Yes, advocating for a very worthy cause, but most certainly for women while keeping her mother's memory alive. I love it. All tied together. Hey, we're going to take a break and come on back. It's really getting close to the eight o'clock hour but we still have more so stay with us morning 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 good morning good morning to you enjoy movies soaps drama comedy inspiration education music and more you get it all when you get mctv because mctv gives you more The facts say Morning Barbados reaches an audience of over 50,000 and Newsnight reaches over 56,000. It's simple. When you advertise, you're getting your message to over 50,000 of your potential customers. Make the call to CBC Sales Department today and watch your business grow. Contact us at 467-5559 or email marketing at cbc.bb. One to one is more than a station. We don't just play music, we keep your company, cheer you up, keep you informed and entertained. We are fine. What do you mean? Every day we bring the party to you. We are your number one party station. We love playing music for our listeners. <laughs> And we are committed to working with our clients and advertisers to make sure that you get the attention that you deserve. 98, 98, 98, 98.1. Morning, morning, morning. Good morning. Good morning to you. Dr. Gillian Birchwood is a neonatologist and pediatrician at the QE8. And she joins us often to talk about care of the little ones in our lives. Today is no different, so let's go right ahead and say good morning, Dr. Birchwood. Welcome. Good morning, Tisha, and good morning, all of Barbados. Good morning. All right. Good stuff. Always good to see you. This morning is a very interesting morning because it's taking me back. Some memories <laughs> way in the distant past. <laughs> We're talking about how we prep for a new baby and uh, how we get things together, what you should be packing, what you need to bring, and how you should prepare. And it's a lot different to what we see on these uh, TV shows 
that gives you the impression that dad is going to put up a crib and everything is going to be all perfect and the baby's going to come home and you're going to sit in a rocking chair. Rock the baby. We know the reality is so different, right? <laughs> Yeah, so let's talk about that. How do you prepare for bringing baby home? First of all, what should be in that bag that you're getting ready to take with you to hospital? Yes, so this is the busy time of year for babies. This is definitely the middle of baby season. And so lots and lots of moms are delivering right now. And I think it's really important, especially for first time moms, to know what you should bring to the hospital for baby. You know, mom usually will look at a list of things that she should bring for herself, which is great. Um, but it really is important to know the right things to bring for baby. And one of the first things that will go in that bag, which is packed with so much love, is um, baby's clothes, which moms will bring. But what clothes should you bring? The first thing to know is that babies can get really, really cold. Remember their room temperature before birth is 37 degrees Celsius in mom. And when that baby is born, the delivery room might be 23 degrees, 24 degrees. Babies are gonna be small, wet and naked. And so they get really cold. So you wanna pack long onesies and short onesies because that baby is gonna get layered up. Long onesies, short onesies, hats because they lose most of their body heat through their head, socks and mittens and blankets. So baby's going to be dressed in all of those things after baby is born. We don't want those thick, thick, thick blankets that are used in the winter. We don't have winter here. And so please, we don't want baby to get overly hot as well. And then baby may spit up from time to time. So you want those little burp cloths that you can pack also. You want to get pampers for baby. There are two different pampers that are labeled as newborn pampers. You want the one that says size N for newborn. It's shorter in the front, so baby's cord can be outside of the pamper and dry up and drop off. And then you're going to want to bring your cotton and surgical alcohol to clean the cord. Soap, because you'll be shown how to bathe and clean your baby. For breastfeeding, you're going to want a nipple cream. And that's because you can certainly get soreness when you're breastfeeding in the very beginning. And don't forget the car seat because you're going to need to bring baby home and you're going to want to make sure that you do so safely. So these are the things that you're going to want to pack and bring for baby at the hospital. Wow. So uh, that's definitely a, a great pack bag there. I think I was overpacked, but, you know. <laughs> Better to be overpacked than underpacked. <laughs> All right, so let's talk about what happens immediately after baby is born. Yes, I like parents to know about this in advance because when you know, it takes some of the fear and apprehension out of things. So right after baby is born, baby is put directly on mom's abdomen for skin to skin care. Like as soon as baby comes out, baby's put straight on mommy. And this is to keep baby warm. It's a really nice bonding experience for mom who's just been pushing and has gone through labor for hours. And during that time, while baby is skin to skin with mom, baby's cord is not going to be cut right away. So a long time ago, baby's cord would have been cut immediately. But what happens now is that we wait for a certain period of time to pass by and then the cord is cut. And this allows a mini blood transfusion to go from the placenta, which is the afterbirth, to baby and that's been shown to be really beneficial and we'll do that even if babies are quite premature so you can expect skin to skin and delayed cord clamping and that mom is going to spend time holding baby and we encourage dads also to spend time skin to skin and holding baby and dads always enjoy it it's a great photo opportunity and if mom has had a cesarean section usually dad gets to do the skin to skin first and he has something to boast to mom about so it's really nice for the parents to experience that afterwards i know one of the major things that moms have to deal with after is breastfeeding and again if we go by what happens on television it often seems like it's going to be a walk in the park but for, for many of us, it can be quite challenging. Absolutely. Before I had my first child, I had been doing pediatrics for some time. Boy, did I get a wake-up call when I had my first child, and I understood it's not like on TV and on social media. You know, the truth is that mom, if she's a first-time mom, has never breastfed before. Baby has never breastfed before. 
So you can expect that it's going to be really fumbly in the beginning. When you were riding a bicycle, you didn't just jump on and ride successfully the first time. So I always want expecting parents to know they should not be discouraged. Baby often looks really confused when you put baby to breast the first time. And you will be assisted and shown how to get that baby to latch on. So you want the baby to latch on not to the nipple itself, but to the dark area around the nipple, which is called the areola. When baby presses on that area, then the milk comes through the nipple. But this is not something that baby will necessarily do right away. It can take 24 hours or so for baby to really get the hang and develop a proper latch. So don't be scared. The second thing about breastfeeding is that your breasts are not going to feel any different right after birth. So many times moms think that they don't have any milk and they really, really worry about it. But there is milk there. Baby's stomachs are so tiny. And so in the beginning, your body just produces a couple of teaspoons of milk each time. But within a few days, the volume of milk really changes a lot. But by then, your baby's stomach has had time to do some stretching. So yes, you do have milk and you should not worry, which is something that is extremely common amongst new moms. And finally about breastfeeding is that when babies do get the hang of breastfeeding, they can really suck very, very hard. They suck really often and they don't stop to ask you how you feel about it. And so you can get some soreness. So that's where that nipple cream can really come in handy. That's why God made babies cute because sometimes they can really cause you to have a little discomfort in the beginning. So don't be discouraged about that either. Yeah, that absolutely works. Yeah, you're cute. Okay, I guess. So <laughs> the, the next thing with that though, is um, for some parents, you know, even uh, after babies latch on and so they're not too sure about mm -hmm. whether baby is getting milk or yes. uh you know here we talk a lot about barbadian culture and caribbean culture i know mm -hmm. parents tell us a lot about the quality of milk mm -hmm. so do you have to work to ensure a good quality of milk that you're giving to baby or does the milk just happen well Thank God we don't have to worry about the quality of milk because, you know, you'll be told you have to eat this and you have to drink that. Otherwise, you won't make good milk. And human milk is, looks a lot thinner than cow's milk. So sometimes people think you're not making good milk, but we're not feeding baby cows. We're feeding baby humans. <laughs> and so that milk <laughs> is going to look different. And so moms should be reassured <laughs> that whatever comes out is going to be perfect for baby. You don't have to eat or drink anything special, have a normal diet, and you are definitely going to make good milk. And you know, the more that baby goes to breast, the more your body is gonna get the signal of exactly how much milk your baby needs. And your body will produce exactly how much milk your baby needs, too much for the neighbor's baby, and too little for the baby down the road just right for your baby. So it's a very dynamic process and it's definitely going to be demand and supply and moms should not feel discouraged because it takes about a week or two to really get the full hang of breastfeeding. Looks really easy on TV, but yeah, you have absolutely. to work at it. It's true. <laughs> and finally, what are some of the checks that are done on baby before baby comes home? Yes. So routinely at our hospital, babies will have a check to see if they have jordanus, which is a yellow color of the skin. Mild jordanus is really common with babies, but high levels of jordanus can happen, for example, if there's a different blood type between mom and baby. Very high levels of jordanus can be dangerous, so babies are automatically checked. It's a painless test. It takes seconds. Secondly, babies are checked to make sure they don't have any signs of a severe heart condition that they can be born with, which may not show up right away. And finally, babies have their hearing tested. Very important, not just to see if they can hear, but how well they can hear, because that's going to impact how well they speak and communicate later on. All right. Always, always insightful. Some good memories where they should be in the distant past. <laughs> Lots of work for me, but I will work with... Uh, uh, the nieces and nephews and all the others are having the cute little babies now, you know, so um, uh, some great ideas on what we need to do to get ready for bringing baby home. And I want to reinforce that car seat 
because yes. uh, we still don't adhere to a lot of those yes. rules that we really should here in Barbados. So car seats, yes. very, very, very important in getting into Absolutely. that. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much, Dr. Birchwood. Always wonderful to see you. Have a great day today Thanks and a wonderful week. Have a great day. Have a great day, Barbados. All right. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we're going to wrap up today's edition. Stay with me. Morning, morning, morning. Point one to one is more than a station. We don't just play music, we keep your company, cheer you up, keep you informed and entertained. We are fine. What do you mean? Every day we bring the party to you. We are your number one party station. We love playing music for our listeners. <laughs> And we are committed to working with our clients and advertisers to make sure that you get the attention that you deserve. 98, 98, 98, 98.1, the one. Celebrating 18 and still your number one party station. From the beautiful shores of the Gem of the Caribbean, Barbados, home of the amazing Harrison's Cave, the tantalizing Oyston's Bay Garden, our historic garrison, the indigenous road tennis, and the friendliest people in the world. We are 94.7 FM, the ultimate Bajan experience. Hey, thanks for spending a little time with me this morning. I had a good time. I certainly hope you did as well. Coming up tomorrow on Morning Barbados, we are talking HR with the Human Resources Management Association of Barbados. We're going to be taking you to Bamboo Retreat, plus this doc talk with Dr. Barker. And the second seminar on the parenting guidelines is coming up as well. As you go through your day today, remember to wear your smiles and do something nice for someone. And be sure to come on back and spend some time with me tomorrow. Have a great day today. Bye-bye. Wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up. Barbados, get up. Good morning.